Welcome to the Reflections Cast, where we invite you to join us in an exploration of the teachings of our dad, Skip Ross. In each episode, we will listen to a talk or lecture from Skip and then discuss what we might be able to apply to our daily lives and reflect on how they can inspire us to grow and change. We hope to continue his legacy and join our listeners in finding new insights and perspectives. Here's episode 17, Set the Deadline. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Steve. And I'm Melody. And on this podcast, we are going to be going through some recordings and teachings from Skip. And the last few weeks, we've been covering some incredible teachings on goal setting. And today is no different. We've got another excellent teaching about goal setting, specifically about setting deadlines, but also covering some other areas that we've we've hit on before, but he does a great job of re-encapsulating and, and restating it because it is so important to the process of goal setting. Uh, so I can't wait to get into the lesson. But before we do, I have an apology to make, and that is to a dear listener, a friend of the podcast, Aaron. You left us a voicemail a few episodes ago, and I missed it in our email. So we thought it would be a great idea to listen to your voicemail now and listen to this feedback. And of course, invite our other listeners. If you guys have some feedback that you would like to send us, uh, there's some great ways to do that. You can do it through our email through comments on our YouTube page or on our Spotify. And of course, like Aaron did, a voice message. It's super cool to be able to have your voices on our podcast. Uh, but there is a voicemail link on our Spotify profile page. And when you submit that audio, it goes right to our podcast email and we can feature you guys on the show. So here it is, our first voice message from a great listener, Aaron. Hi guys, it's Erin. I just wanted to say thank you for the Reflections cast. I see it as positive input that I didn't even know that I needed. I am a pretty positive person, but I spend a lot of time in negative spaces trying to be light. And it has depleted me over the years of my own um, internal positivity. So I am so grateful for the opportunity to learn from your dad in his own words from the podcast every week. I'm happy to say that I have caught up thanks to listening at one and a half speed. And I just really look forward to continuing to learn and grow, to be challenged, um, to receive insights, and to find strength from this podcast to become the best version of myself. All right. So there it was our first voicemail. Thank you, Aaron. Melody, what did you think of that? I love it. This is so exciting. (laughs) Our first voice message. Thank you, Aaron, for joining our podcast. This is so much fun. Um, And I really love hearing the encouragement firsthand um, of what the podcast is meaning to you. And I happen to know Aaron personally and know that the work that she does um, with foster teens um, and teens who are aging out of the foster care system is such important work. Uh, mm-hmm. but like, like she said, um, you know, it's, it's heavy work. And so I'm so glad that, um, the podcast can be that space of positivity and light for you, Aaron. And I know that it certainly has been for me as well to be able to, uh, relearn some of these things from dad and remember some of these teachings. And I'm just so excited that we get to share it with people. I think that, we forget how important it is to have that continual positive input in our lives. Even those of us who were at Circle A for many years or who are naturally positive people or who are high achievers and feel like we know the techniques of achievement and growth, it's still so essential to surround ourselves with um, teaching, encouragement, insight, and community. So I love, love, love that this podcast gets to be that for people. So thank you, Aaron, for sharing. And um, I hope that this will prompt some of our other listeners to send in a voice message as well. Absolutely. It's, it's a little technically challenging. So I'm, I'm really 
proud of you, Aaron, for figuring it out. <laughs> but uh, I also really appreciate the feedback. And I love that everything you said, that's the reason why we're doing the podcast, to be that little spot for people to refuel and feel empowered to bring that positivity back into the world. Uh, and it's something that I think at Circle A, it's easy to take for granted that positive community and how it it fuels this environment so easily. Uh, when we're talking with people who have been around Circle A or you know dynamic living teachings, it's so easy to feel enthused and excited and positive. And then you go back out into the world and man, it can be harsh and it can be rough and it can be draining. So I love that the podcast can continue to bring that Circle A environment, that Circle A atmosphere into your home lives because that that has been our goal from the very beginning. So I love that. And I also really like that little tech tip of listening to us at 1.5 speed. Absolutely. That is some high end podcast tech tips right there. (laughs) But it's definitely also something that I know Skip used to do back in the day when he had like these six hour video or not video cassettes, but tape cassette series that he would listen to. He would definitely play them at two times, even three times speed, I think. Yep. So yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm glad that you were able to uh, to do that. And yeah, it is a, a feature that's available on Spotify. It's available on YouTube. Just listen to us super fast. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, Aaron did tell me personally that my laugh is very funny at, at 1.5 speed. So you're welcome, people. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's see. Speaking of community, there is a community that I I love hearing about. I love being a part of. And that is Pioneer Circle. Melody, can you tell us what's going on over at Pioneer Circle right now? I would love to tell you what's going on at Pioneer Circle. Pioneer Circle is, um, like Stephen said, our community of families who are resourcing the next generation for um, their success in leadership and in pioneering for the future. So we are having a lot of fun with the Pioneer Circle. We are continuing our daily videos, our weekly challenges, our monthly coaching calls. We've got an app that everybody um, is using to read their goals every morning and every night. So that is super cool. And we are starting to get into some themes that we're going to be going through each month in the Pioneer Circle. So the theme that we have coming up is going to be looking for the good and talking about the good. So I'm really excited to have those conversations um, with our leadership team, with the young people that are a part of the circle and with all of the families and the leaders as well. So it's going to be a great time coming up on the Pioneer Circle. I also just have to mention, I just have to tease something else that's going to be coming soon. And that is our registration for next summer's Circle A Summit. So as many of you know, we held our first family camp this last summer, which was uh, called our Circle A Summit. And it was such an awesome time. Um, We'll tell you guys more about it over the next few weeks as we get everything um, open for registration. But that registration is going to be coming soon. So if you are interested in being among the first to register, you can go to circleacamp.com. That's circleacamp.com. You can find out about the Pioneer Circle. You can find out about the Circle A Summit that is going to be in June in Michigan this coming summer. And we've just got so many exciting things going on. So don't miss out. Go and check us out. CircleACamp.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get into the teaching with Skip. He is going over setting deadlines, giving that concrete limitation to your goal setting so that you can really achieve it. And then some other good guidance Uh, attached to the end of this teaching. So listen in for that too. All right, guys, let's get into it with Skip. Here he is. Letter F. Letter F is to set deadlines. Timetables for each item in your goals list. Remember, we talked about the PGA. And making that chart of, here's what the goal is, here's why I deserve it, here's what I could do to begin immediately, here's what I can do a week from now, 
you, you, you put parameters on. I find a lot of resistance to putting a timetable on goals. A lot of resistance. I have found that from people all these years, ever since I started teaching in this area. And I, I understand that resistance because I have a certain amount of it myself. I have for many years believed that, that a part of what I want in life, part of what I need in life, is that freedom. And the, the time parameters, the deadlines being put on goal seems to impinge on my freedom. And so I struggle with that. You may not struggle with that. If you don't, I congratulate you. And I say, good for you and be grateful. But there are a lot of people apparently who struggle with this whole matter of setting a deadline and then sticking to that deadline. You know, a deadline can be moved. I mean, if you give it everything you've got, if you, if you perform in excellence and you miss that deadline, it's not the end of the world. But without the deadline, you won't be as effective. I won't be as effective. So the, so the, the timetable for each item becomes really important. So when you begin to look at the timetable you set for each, be on the lookout for impossible chunks. But if there are some in there that seem larger than are reasonable to expect that you will get done, then just break them down into smaller bite-sized steps. It's okay. The, the desire on the part of some to make this seem like this gigantic step I'm going to take will be impressive to those people that are observing me. And if I can go from here to here in my physical goal or in my relationship goals or in my business goals, if I can go from here to here in that period of time, everybody's going to be impressed. And sometimes we will set goals and chunks and deadlines of goals that are unreasonably large. If they are indeed impossible, then chuck them. But if they are unreasonably large, just break them down. Don't allow yourself, and I'm talking to me, I can't afford to allow myself to succumb to the myth that a deadline missed is a goal that's dead. But there are a lot of people who say to me, Skip, I'll, I'll, work, I'll, give it, I'll give it a year. And if it doesn't work in a year, then I'm doing something else. Wow. Okay. Now, you know, so once in a while, I feel like saying, why don't you just quit right now? <laughs> I mean, why, why put yourself through the frustration and waste my time? I, I, I haven't said that often. I, I think I remember once or twice saying it that straight out. <laughs> Just a deadline missed is not a, a goal that's gone dead. You can reestablish another deadline. It's okay. And that that brings us into a whole new understanding and appreciation for what failure is all about. And though that that concept of failure is not a part of this particular lesson. It, well, could be if I wanted to expand, but I don't want to expand because I've already got more than I can get to. So, letter G. Letter G is to reaffirm the goal on a daily basis. In other words, read the three-by-five card at least twice a day. And many of you who have um, heard Dynamic Living, and most of you in the room have, have heard me say again and again, every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night. And I was, we were recently in Australia, and there were at least 
two or three of the speakers who someplace along in their talk started saying every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night. And we went to the West Coast Convention, and one of the speakers there said every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night. You repeat it twice a day. Is that, is that hard to do? It's not hard unless you are not really committed to your goal. If you have not set that as a potential roadblock to your accomplishing and the solution being, I will, regardless of what else happens every day, in the morning I will read my goals, in the evening I will read my goals, if that is a part of your solution pattern, it's not really that hard. It, it is a busy life that we're involved in. Every place I go, every place in the world I go, I find busy people. Don't have time. People that don't respond. People that don't call back. People that don't show up. You ask them why? Oh, I'm just so busy. Well, we're all busy. But are we too busy? Am I too busy? to do one of the crucial things that will make goals become reality in my life. If I'm too busy to do that, I am indeed too busy. And I need to simplify my life someplace, but not in the area of reaffirming the goal on a daily basis. See, the reason that's so, so crucial and so important is that it, it keeps it in our focus constantly. If you're involved every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night, it's difficult to get away from the focus of that goal. It's difficult to allow yourself to begin to make excuses about why you have not done this or done that or accomplished this or accomplished that. It makes it, it, makes it possible for us to keep on track with the things that need to be done to get the goal accomplished. So we review it. And also, in terms of reaffirming the goal on a daily basis, the rewriting of the goal at least once a day seems to be important. In all the research that's being done by those who study this and do the psychological um, testing and all, they, they indicate that there is a definite difference between those who don't read, or who don't write goals at all, and those who write goals but never look at them again, those who write goals and read them every day, and those who write goals, read them every day, and rewrite them every day. There is a marked distinction in the amount that's accomplished by those groups of people. If I can improve my chances... Why would I not want to do that? I would want to do that. I do want to do that. So a part of it then is rewriting the goals. And a lot of people have said, you, you mean I got to sit down and I got to think through and I got I to rewrite them with new words and new... No, just the same goal. It's just... I mean, you got the three by five card there. If you need to, you, you just look at it and write it, and then you can take that and throw it away if you want to. You don't have to keep all of those notes you write every day. <laughs> you won't have to build an extra room to house all of the writings you've done. You just, just write them down. It's okay. Scrap piece of paper. The process of writing them, seeing them, being involved here, being involved here, being involved here, emphasizes and focuses the goal which is what needs to happen if the unconscious mind is to work on it 24 hours a day at the unconscious level. That's what I want to happen. I want the unconscious mind to be working on it even when I'm not working on it, don't you? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have somebody working all day, every day, on the things that you want to accomplish in your life? That's the little man in the basement. <laughs> that I talk about all the time. And I got to give him the right information. If I give him the right information, he will do the right thing with it. If I give him wrong information, he will do 
what he's supposed to do with that as well. He just he just does what I tell him to do. He does what you tell him to do. Now, mine doesn't tell do what. Never mind. You know what I mean. Your little man or little woman or little elf or whatever it is you have down there in the basement does what you tell it, him, her, to do. All right, so that was our time with Skip this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. It's always great to uh, hear these lessons on these specific points. Really take some time to delve deep into this particular section. And that is, for this time, both setting those deadlines and reaffirming those goals on a daily basis. So the first thing that he talked about setting those deadlines is set real time limits for each of your goals. And he talks about how some people find it really hard to make those firm, concrete limits because it limits that freedom of possibility to to do something else, to come back to it later, to change what you're doing so that you can have fun while you're doing your goal. It can be hard to, to figure out how to find that balance of freedom. And Skip even says that he himself struggled with it. Um, but, uh, he still recommends that setting those firm deadlines can help us to focus and be more effective at reaching those goals. Uh, he also says to be on the lookout for those chunks of impossibility, those points where the goal is just impossible. But if they are just unreasonably large, then just break them down into smaller steps and move on towards that goal. Um, he also says, don't quit your goal because of a missed deadline. A deadline missed is not a goal that's gone dead. I love that quote um, because it, it reminds us that, you know, just because you failed to meet the deadline doesn't mean you failed to meet the goal. Mm -hmm. And the goal can still be achieved. You just have to make an adjustment. Uh, so I love that there is freedom there, but there's still that uh, accountability in trying to meet that deadline and gets you that much closer. So bringing that effectiveness, bringing that focus into your deadlines is super important. And then he talks about letter G reaffirming those goals on a daily basis. Read your goals at least twice a day, every morning, every night. And I wrote down this quote because it is a good one, but it, well, it keeps you on your toes. And that is every morning, every night. It's not hard unless you are not really committed to your goal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's, he's right. He's right. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about commitment. And it keeps your, your goal in focus and prevents you from building up excuses as to, well, I forgot about that one or I wasn't really focused on that one today. No, if you're checking in every morning, every night, you know exactly what your priorities are supposed to be and where your focus is supposed to be. Um, let's see. He also talks about rewriting your goals at least once a day, <laughs> which is something that, man, I will fully admit that is something I struggle with. All Every goal you want to focus on once a day, it's pretty easy, but it it also takes focus and time. And I wrote down a quote. He said, if I can improve my chances, why would I not want to do that? And that's exactly what rewriting your goals can do. So why would we not want to get us even that much closer towards achieving our goal? It helps your unconscious mind work on goals, even when you're not thinking about it, which why, why would you not want that? <laughs> yep. It makes all the sense in the world. And then uh, he also just put in a little a reminder that it it gives instructions to that little person in your brain basement <laughs> <laughs> and keeps them working on those goals, even when you're not actively thinking about it. And I think that that is maybe a, a tricky concept for those that aren't familiar with dynamic living to fully understand. But it's just that idea of the unconscious mind controlling your actions, even when you're not really thinking about what it is that uh, needs to be done to get you towards your goals. And I, I love, I love this teaching. I love all these bullet points that we have uh, from Skip on it. And 
I also love hearing Melody's thoughts on them. So Melody, do you have any thoughts on all of this teaching that we got from Skip this week? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely classic Skip Ross goal goal setting and goal achieving teaching. So it was a fun episode because it's just very classic, just very much. Yep. I learned all this stuff from dad <laughs> and this is ingrained into me in such a way that I just feel like everyone knows this about goals because <laughs> I've mm. known it my whole life because I've heard it my whole life. But, uh, you know, obviously, as dad taught, a lot of people don't. Um, so but the thing is, even though I've literally heard this my whole life and I could have said all of this word for word if I was, you know, quoting dad, there's still <laughs> stuff that I either choose not to do or forget to do or, you know, do it in my own way or whatever. So it's still good to really hear um, just the challenge, just the call to excellence and the call to growth in this area. And I feel like that's what this episode was to me was just a call to take it to the next level. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's also classic Skip Ross. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yep those those reminders that, you know, I, I know it, too. But man, it's it's good to it's good to revisit and yep. just reflect. All right. Well. Are you ready for some questions? Yeah, let's jump in. <laughs> All right. So question number one I had um, really talks about that that first section of the of the teaching. And that is how do you find a balance between maintaining a flexible timeline for your goals while also making sure it doesn't become a continual moving target that eventually just demotivates you towards finishing your goal? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And that was certainly the first thing that came to my mind, even just for myself, <laughs> listening to him mm -hmm. talk about deadlines, because I mean, it's really interesting when I think about my goals and I've been setting, I've been making a list of 10 goals for the year since I was 10 years old. So we are talking 30 <laughs> years of experience doing this three by five cards. Then it was to my phone. Now it's to the every app. But you know, 10 goals for the year, reading them every morning and every night. And I will say there's a lot of goals I have achieved, which I'm super proud of. But there are some goals on that list that go on that list every year. And like, I'll just be very transparent and say one of them is a weight goal. And it's a number that I get real close to, but that I haven't actually gotten to in, mm, I mean, probably 10 years. But I keep, I just, it's there and I read it. I read it every morning and every night, but it's been there so long and in the same way that it's like, I don't know. I feel like my brain has, um, it kind of overlooks it or something. Like it doesn't mean as much as the other goals because it's like that one that I'll get very close to, but not actually <laughs> achieve. And so it's interesting because I'm, as I was listening to him, I was like, maybe I need to, you know, change my strategy on what I'm doing with this particular goal. And there's a couple others that are sort of similar. Um, to maybe break it down or write it in a different way or like take it off the list for a year, maybe something. I don't know, because I do think that your brain can just get tired of seeing the same thing all the time, especially if you're not actually achieving it. So that's one piece um, that I'm going to think about and probably um, change a little bit in my own life. But the moving target thing you know, the, the other thing is when we set, if we, if we do the 10 goals for the year, then that's kind of like the deadline is the end of the year. And that can be a little problematic as well, because, you know, some of the goals I set for my year really should probably be like a three month timeline. Right. And some of them maybe should be part of a bigger five-year plan. So I think that thinking carefully about the deadlines on our goals really will I think will help us move more quickly towards achieving them. And I've shifted that in different ways in my life with my monthly, you know, I guess we can call them goals, but essentially my monthly list of things that I intend to accomplish. Um, and that has really motivated me actually a lot more than my yearly goals, because I know that I, 
I expect myself to get these things done every month. And so I do. So I think that he's really, really right with, with the deadline thing. Um, it made me think of the book that I mentioned last podcast, the John Acuff book, all it takes is a goal. Um, Mm. because he talks about easy goals, middle goals, and guaranteed goals. And it was interesting because you would think it would be like easy goals, middle goals, and then like long-term goals. But he talks about it in terms of guaranteed goals. And essentially he's teaching if you build a system to get to the bigger goals, then all you have to do is implement the system by doing the easy goals and the middle goals. And the easy goals he talks about are things that you can do in a day. The middle goals are things you can do in a week to between a week and a month. And so I really like that framework because it's helping you build this system that is going to get you to the bigger goals that you want to achieve in your life. So I love that. And he also talks about, um, different zones. So dad always talked about the comfort zone, which John Acuff talks about as well. I'm, I'm still telling you guys, I'm pretty sure he came to circle a or has a copy of dad's (laughs) book somewhere because a lot of it is very similar, but he talks about the comfort zone and we all know what that means. But then he also talks about the chaos zone, which is essentially when you (laughs) set 10 goals at the beginning of the year and try to achieve them all in the first month of the year. And you're totally chaotic because you can't possibly do all of those things that quickly. And you kind of burn out from your idea of the goals that you had set for yourself. So he calls that the chaos zone. But what he talks about is between the comfort zone and the chaos zone is the potential zone. And that's where you really move forward in the achievement of your goals. So I really liked that framework as well. And I think that the more deliberate we can be about setting smart deadlines for our goals, helps us stay right in that potential zone where we're achieving. So, you know, to your question, how to find the balance, I I do think that's a little bit individualized. Um, But I think that finding those easy goals that we can achieve in a daily basis and the middle goals that we can achieve between a week and a month, that's going to help us move towards the bigger targets. Hmm. I love that. I think that's a great response. I love that we can tap into these other sources as well to bring a full, a fuller response to these questions. I think that that is a great response. And I hope the viewers got as many notes out of that as I did (laughs) because I've just been busily writing notes here. Love Uh, it. But uh, honestly, I think the the best strategy for, for this is probably we need to check out that book. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a lot of good stuff in there. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, uh, again, it is going to be on our affiliates link for our Amazon uh referrals on our youtube description for the episode and in the player as well uh and so that helps support the podcast as well so if you want to check it out it's there all right so question number two is there a strategy for how to set realistic deadlines for my goals without feeling overwhelmed because you know in dad's teaching he really doesn't go into uh, a strategy per se for setting these deadlines. And I feel like that's something that I always struggle with. Is it just a matter I need to pick up this book and read it and and then I'll have the right strategy going forward? Or what do you recommend, Melody? Yeah, I mean, (laughs) I do think it's a little bit nuanced to the person and to the goals because, you know, Mm. some goals are going to take a long time and other goals. I mean, we have to consider the principle of, I don't remember what it's called, but essentially the principle that a task expands or contracts, depending on the amount of time that you decide you have to complete it, which is so true. And I see it in my life again and again and again. And I'm like, sometimes I really wish that I would give myself tighter deadlines because I know if I give myself two days to accomplish something, I'll get it done in two days. I don't need to give myself two weeks. All that does is give me more time to consternate about getting it done rather than just getting it done. So <laughs> it it is a little bit individualized. It is a little bit dependent on the goal. I think that this book, the John Acuff book is a great resource. I also think a book that I've mentioned before called The One Thing is really, really good because it helps you kind of narrow down on what's the next right thing 
in the achievement of the specific goal. So I think that currently the strategy that I'm working with is I've got daily habits that move me towards my annual goals. And then I do I do a monthly list of I call them to do's, but they're essentially goals, a a monthly list of things I expect myself to do. And all of those things on that monthly list are moving towards the bigger goals. So nothing gets on that list that's something extraneous to those big things. So we've got the daily habits, we've got the monthly list, and then we've got the big annual goals that I read every every morning and every night. And that's my current strategy. I do feel like there are some things that I'm going to tweak about that next year when I sit down to write my goals. And I think one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm still going to make 10 goals for the year, but I'm going to pick the three that I'm going to focus on first, because I do think there is something to be said about you know, we can really only focus on one thing well at a time. And so if we're trying to do 10 things at a time, that's a lot. That's maybe the chaos zone. Three things at a time is manageable. And again, in this John Acuff book, he actually talks about, (laughs) he actually talks about achieving goals as kind of playing, playing a game, (laughs) which is super fun. Um, But he talks about the different types of games that you can play. And I, I don't remember all of them, but it's essentially, you can play a health game, you can play a work game, like basically breaking Mm. it down into the different categories. And he's like, you can do one in each category, but don't try to do more than one in any category or you're going to be in the chaos zone. So that's another way to kind of, you know, limit what you're working on in any given time so that you can give it your best. So I, uh, that's kind of a scatter strategy. I could write something really profound about it, but if I'm not practicing it, then it that would just be theory. So <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> my practice. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess moving on to question number three, with these first two questions, I thought I just I want to hear your perspective on strategy and implementation. And then this third question is really just about helping out the listener understand dad's um, (laughs) more nuanced points that he makes from time to time, such as uh, this tiny person inside of our brains. So how does the unconscious mind factor into the accomplishing of achieving difficult goals. Can we, can we flesh out exactly what he means when he's talking about this little person in the basement? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I, I, I was thinking when I was listening to this episode, like, man, if, if people haven't, haven't heard the dynamic living seminar, they may be very confused right now as to what (laughs) is going on in somebody's basement and who is down there and what's happening. So uh, the little man in the basement or little woman or person or whatever, um, is basically dad's way of talking about our, the, our, memory system in our brain. Um, And I think that he was even a little bit before his time with his understanding of how the brain works. Now, you know, there's so much science behind what he taught more as theory, which is really, really cool as far as neuroplasticity and building new, you know, patterns and spaces in the brain and as far as memory. So um, it's really cool. But it's it's so funny because I was driving in the car with my daughter today and we were talking about a movie that I had seen a very long time ago and I couldn't remember the details of it. And she was like, how could you not remember? And she's like, I keep everything right in the front of my brain. And I was telling her, well, when you're 40 years old and you've seen so (laughs) many movies, at some point you still have a memory of things, but you kind of put it out of your consciousness because your consciousness can't act, your, your conscious brain can't actually hold all of that information at one time. It has to go into some sort of storage system, right? So I was explaining this to her today. And then we're talking about this tonight. So it's really funny. But 
essentially the little man in the basement is the brain storage system. And dad is always taught that we still do have access to that information that we've kind of put in the deep freeze. And if we (laughs) remind our brains that we do have access to that information, it can eventually come back to the surface. So that's the little man in the Mm. basement. Mm. Um, As far as how it, factors into the accomplishing of goals. I think it's more of the neuroplasticity space of, you know, we are building new patterns in our brain. We are building new thoughts, new beliefs about ourselves, about what we're capable of achieving, about who we are becoming. And as we build those thoughts by reading these things every morning and every night, we are essentially reprogramming our brain. I mean, it's this is how we do it. So that is very scientific and very powerful. Um, Mm -hmm. So I am grateful that we were able to learn that from dad. And I think that we still as a species have so much more we can learn and grow in this area um, about the power of our brain. So I love the invitation to practice it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for giving a little bit more context and clarity <laughs> to dad's teaching. I think everybody appreciates that, but also that concept. It's a really important part of this discussion. And without that context, I think some people could get a little lost. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I, I love this teaching. I thought it was great to hit these points uh, as we move through this discussion of goal setting. Um, obviously, creating those deadlines, keeping yourself accountable and pushing yourself towards better focus, better understanding. Such an important part. So. Uh, is there any closing thoughts you had with everyone? Uh, I loved these answers that you gave. Thank you uh, again for giving them. I think that uh, I certainly got a lot of notes out of it. And I think that our listeners did as well. Yeah. I mean, I I feel like I am cheating a little bit by just taking other experts and repeating what they teach. But I mean, they are the experts. So I feel like it's probably more helpful than my my theories. But um I do think that as we continue to put this, all of this into practice, we find what does and doesn't work in our own individual lives and rhythms. Um, And what I think is important is to not get stuck in what I was talking about, where I've had this goal for years of a, of a weight number. And I just keep reading the same Mm -hmm. thing and letting it and being numb to it. I -hmm. think, I think, we, we can be in a danger of kind of getting numb to some of this stuff. So if I have any um, encouragement for all of us, myself mostly included, um, it's just to be aware of those places where we're not intentional or where we may be numb to something and think about how we can shift our practices for the best results. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Thank you again. And thank you to all of you listeners for joining us on this journey with the Reflections cast. And remember that your support means everything. So if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit that like button, write us a review or leave us a voicemail. We love it. You get featured on the episode and please share this episode with friends, family or anyone that you think might benefit from our discussions. We believe in you. We are committed to helping you thrive on your journey of discovering all you were created to be. And until next time, keep reflecting, keep growing, and pass it on.